Hey, what's going on guys? Welcome back to another video. I usually use CRA, which is the Create React app to scaffold my React projects. And one of the major problem which I face is that my local dev server becomes a bit slow as my application code grows. And also the build time increases whenever we make frequent changes in the code base. In this video, we will explore an alternative to CRA, which is Veet. It's a new front end tooling and we will see how it works and we'll also explore why it is faster as compared to the CRA. So if this sounds interesting, then stick around. Also, don't forget to subscribe the channel and press the bell icon so that you don't miss the videos like this one. So let's get started. So we will soon discuss how Wheat can be a solid alternative to the Create React app. But if you are also looking for an alternative to boost your career in 2024, then check out Coding Ninjas. Lately, they have undergone a refresh with an objective to help the learner in every possible way to get the tech career you deserve faster. The advantages of choosing a course at Coding Ninjas is that you get the fastest one-to-one -one doubt solving session with their 500 plus teaching assistants ready to help you and solves 85% of your doubts in less than 20 minutes. Enroll into their three-stage learning model where they have an integrated studio, their coding practice platform with the course classroom where you will learn, excel and stand out. You will get a placement preparation with one-to-one -one mentorship session that will help you to ace your interviews. Over the last seven years, Coding Ninjas have helped 100,000 learners to achieve their dream job. They have 1,400 plus alumni working in man companies and unicorns. Learners have got one CR plus highest package after completing their courses and 128 plus percent average hike in their careers. If you are someone who wants to upskill to grab opportunities at top tech companies or looking for an alternative to boost your career, then with the Coding Ninja's advantage, you can get the tech career you deserve faster. Check out their wide range of courses and job boot camps and give yourself another chance to ace your tech career with top packages and working in top companies. You can take a free trial of any Coding Ninja course. You will find all the links in the description of the video. All right, guys. So before we jump directly into the wheat and scaffold our first project, let's go through some slides and let's understand some concepts. So the problem is before ES modules were available in browsers, developers have no native mechanism to allow the JavaScript to run directly into the browser in a modular fashion. And that's where we are very familiar with the concept of bundling using tools like Webpack, Rollup and Parcel, which actually crawls, process and concatenate all our source modules into a single file, which is recalled as a bundle JS and that runs on the browser. And this greatly improves the development experience from the front end developers. Now let's understand what this ES module is and how bundling works. So now we will see that we have an example here where we have an app.js file, which is using an import statement. And this import is actually an ES module. So we have an import of an add function, which is a named function. And we have this function defined in our mat.js where we actually export this function, but we cannot run the app.js and mat.js directly into the browser. And that's where we use the web pack and we do the bundling and our existing code will look like this. We have a function add, and then we do a console log of that. So this bundle.js will now be executed on the browser and we see the output. Next, we will see that how we start up our dev server using the CRA. So create react app is based on a webpack bundle configuration and we see how our dev environment is running. So we see that we have an entry point, which is our index.js, which has a reference to our app.js. Now all the entries and routes and all the modules, which are inside the routes, like all the import export statements, they all are bundled together and form a bundle.js file. And that file is served on the browser, which we see our dev server environment. So whenever we make any change into any file, all the files are bundled again, and then they are served on the browser. Next, let's understand what Wheat is trying to solve. So Wheat solves two major problems. So one is the slow server start, which we just saw in our CRA that all the files are getting bundled first and then they are served on the browser. So this problem is solved using the native ESM based module. So now majority of the browser supports the ESM based module. 
how we can inject them in the HTML and which can be run directly onto the browser. We're going to see it in a bit. The second problem was the slow update. So whenever your code base increases and whenever you make changes in your code, it actually bundles all the files. If you're using create react app or webpack based configuration, whenever you make changes, all the files will get bundled again and then the files will be served on your browser. So this problem is solved using the hot module replacement using Vite. We are going to see this as well, what this hot module replacement is in a bit. Now we see that how Vite actually serves us the dev server. So this is the native ESF based dev server and which is being used by the Vite. So whenever we start our server, it will readily available. It just makes an HTTP request to the entry point and the source code is readily available using the native ESM. So majority of the part is taken care by the browser itself about bundling and Vite only transform and serve the source code based on the demand. As soon as the browser request, it's going to serve the source code. So it's a very different approach, which actually makes Vite a bit faster as compared to the create react app. Now let's go to the official documentation and let's go through it and let's see how we can just scaffold our first wheat project. All right. So this is the official website of the wheat js.dev and it's a next generation front end tooling and it helps us with some major advantages like instant server start lightning fast HMR, which is the hot module replacement. And there are a lot of rich features, optimized bill, several plugins, which can be used and it offers a fully type API. So we are going to go to the guide and from the guide, what I will do is let's go to the get started and I'm going to scroll down and we'll see that how we can start wheat. So if we go here, then we see that we have a scaffolding your first wheat project. So for that, what we will need to do is we need to use the NPM command. We will have a create and then we use wheat at the rate latest. We can also use the template. So if you know already that we want to create a react app or we want to create a view app, we can use any one of the syntax. But for now, we will just going to use the NPM create wheat. And before using the NPM, you should also install Node.js into your machine. So let's go to the Visual Studio Code and let's see how we can scaffold the application. So I'm going to copy this. I will go to Visual Studio Code and I'm going to go to the terminal. So I'm already into my directory, which is the Vite app. And I have already installed my Node.js. So I can check it via Node-V. This is my version. And we also have the NPM. So this is my NPM version. Now what I will do is I'm just going to copy and paste. So this is the NPM create wheat at the rate latest. I'm going to hit enter. Now this is going to ask me what is your project name. So I'm going to give my project name as first wheat app. All right. Then it's going to ask us what framework you need to use. So you can use a vanilla JavaScript. You can have a view, react, preact, lit, Schwelt, solid, quick others. So it has a huge list of frameworks which are supported. So we are going to use react because we are much more interested in using the react. So I'm going to select react and enter. Now it is going to ask me that what variant you need to use. You need to use a TypeScript or a TypeScript with SWR or you have a JavaScript and JavaScript with SWR. I'm going to go with the very simple, which is a JavaScript. All right. So now you see that as soon as you select it, your application is already scaffold and it's bootstrap. So you have your application here. And if you want to compare this with your create react app, so you can just have a parallel screen and you can just write create react app and create your app. And you will notice that it takes a lot of time to create your project using the CRA. So that's where wheat is very powerful. Now what we can do is we already have the directory here. We just need to use npm install and then we have npm run dev. All right. So before doing that, let's go through the folder structure and files that we have in our project. So the first file I see is beach.config.js. So it's a simple configuration file, which is actually going to define the plugins, which we will be using. So it has a simple defined config and you can provide your plugins. You can also provide more options here. You can have a server as an option and you can provide the port number and everything. We're going to see later on. Now we have a package JSON file. So in the package JSON file, we have the type as module. Then we have the scripts, which is dev, wait, we have the build, we have lint and we have preview. For the dev dependencies, we have the react, react dome dependency. And we have a VJS plugin react because we are using a react app. Now, if we go to the index.html, then we have this main HTML file where we have an ID as root. But here you will notice one more thing that we have a script where we have a type as module. 
and this is actually the native ESM. So you can use the type module and you can inject your ES module files directly into your HTML. And that is where the native ES module based syntax makes Vite much more faster to serve your code. Now, if we go to the source folder, it will be pretty standard. We have this main JSX where we have this create root document dot get element by ID. We take the root and then we just render our app component. We go to the app component and we see that this is our app component. We are not going to change anything. Now let's go and let's install the dependencies. I'm going to go to the project first. So I'm going to have the CD. Now I'm going to have the npm install so that is going to install all my dependencies and then once we have the dependencies installed we are just going to run our dev server all right so all our dependencies are installed now if we want to run our server what we will do is we are simply going to use npm run dev and you will see that it instantly load our dev server so you will see that we have already our dev server started in just few milliseconds and now i'm going to copy this all right i will go to the browser and into the browser i'm going to add this and let's hit enter and you will see that we have our first project wheat plus react and it has a simple counter so we can just click on the counter and you will see that when you added your app.js and you save to test the hmr all right, which is the hot module reload. Now what we will do is I'm going to go back here and here I will add a few properties into my config. So what I will do is I want to change the port. So I will go to the wheat. I will go here. I'm going to have the server and inside this, I'm going to give the port as 3001 or maybe 3000. Uh, along with that, I also want that whenever I run my application, it should automatically open the browser as well. So I'm going to have the open and I'm going to give the open flag as true. I'm going to terminate my server and we will again start our local environment. So I'm going to have npm run dev and if I hit enter, you will see that as soon as I hit enter, it immediately opens it in the browser. So we can easily identify how fast it opens our dev server because it is using the native ESM module. Now let's understand what this HMR is. So if I go back to my Visual Studio code and here what I will do is uh, I'm going to go here and I will go to the app.jsx and here I'm going to simply add uh, something. So I will add an h1 and I'm going to add uh, what is HMR. So now if I save this, you will see that it is only going to replace the app.jsx from the module graph. So it generates a module graph and it is only going to replace this particular component so that it doesn't affect the other parts of the application and it becomes very quick. So I'm going to save it and you will see that Vite HMR update only updated on the app.jsx. And if we go to the browser, we will see that we have this updated. Now I'm going to change the counter. And if I go here and now here, what I will do is I'm going to create a new component. So let's have a new folder. I'm going to name the folder as component and I'm going to create a simple file for the component, which will be message.jsx. All right. Now in this, I'm going to use a snippet and create a component. And here I will have an H2 and I'm, I am from message component. All right, I will just remove this. We don't want. And now we can just import this in our app.jsx. So here I will go and have my message. All right, the message is imported and I'm going to save it here. So you will see that when I save it and if I go back here, you will see that I am from my message and the state is also maintained. So it is not rendering everything. So that's where this hot module replacement, it actually speed up the changes in our code. So if we go here and now this time I'm only going to change this. I am from message component and I'm going to have HMR and I will save it. Then you will see that HMR update only on the message.jsx and it's not bundling all the source code again and then you're serving it on your local server. The other aspect which I want to show you is that how we can use the environment variables into the wheat project. So what I will do is we're going to have a simple uh, .env file. So I'm going to go here. I will have the .env file. So when we scaffold our application using the CRA, we use a environment variable where we use it as the react underscore app. And then we give the name of our variables. So if we go here, then you will see that adding custom environment variables and we used to use react underscore app. And then we give the name of the variable. 
Now, whatever the key we give it, if we want to fetch it, we used to have a process.env and then we have react app and then the key. But when we use it with the wheat, we don't have to do like this. What we can do is let's go to the documentation and we can go to environment variables here. And here we will see that how we can make use of it. So we need to use wheat and then we give the key name. So let's copy this. All right. I will go here and I'm going to add it here and I'm going to give the key as the page. So let's have the page. Now, if I want to fetch the key, then what I can do is I'm going to go here. I'm going to have the H3 and here we can actually fetch it. So if we want to fetch it, what we will do is we are going to use the import dot meta dot env and then we are going to give the name of our key. So the name of our key was wheat some key. So let's use that. So I'm going to have wheat some key. All right, so now let's restart our server. So I'm going to cancel this and I'm going to restart it again. Before that, let me close this and I'm going to hit enter. And now we should be able to see something here. Oh, oops, we don't see anything. So we made a mistake. Let's take it inside the application. So I'm going to move it. All right, I will save it and let's restart our server again. So I'm going to restart my server and we see that we have the page here. All right. So this way we can actually use the environment variables. But if we don't give the wheat, so let me have a DB password. So I'm going to have DB pass and this DB pass will be one, two, three. And let's try to use that. So I'm going to go here. I'm going to have the console dot log and I'm going to log this. So let me log the import and I'm going to change this to DB pass. So let me copy this. I'm going to go here. I'm going to change this DB pass. And now if we run it and let's go and let's check. So if I go to the inspect element in the console and we see that we have an undefined. So we really need to give the key and the key should start with wheat and then only we should be able to get the value of the environment files. All right. So if I go, then we see we have one, two, three. Now, the last part I want to show you that if you want to have your application to be production ready, so what you can do is uh, you can simply go to package JSON and then you can use the build. So let's use it. So we can use npm run build and this is going to build our production version. So you see that it's very quickly and it has created a dist folder and you have all the assets and everything. All right. Now, if we want to preview this, we can also use the preview. So let's have the npm run preview and this is going to preview us the application from the dist folder. So this is how our application looks like. So that's where uh, wheat is a bit of faster as compared to the CRA uh, as it's using the native ESM module to load the source code into the browser directly. That's all I have in this video from now onwards, maybe from our next projects, we are going to use wheat as a front end tool for our react application and react projects. So I hope you like the video. A thumbs up is appreciated. You can also follow me on Twitter for latest updates. And before you go, don't forget to subscribe the channel and press the bell icon so that you don't miss the videos like this one. Thank you. Thanks for watching.